Welcome to the Recharge Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Rob. I'm Adam. And I'm Will. Today, we've got a new bike from Mondraker and some cool new technology from Fox and Wireless Tech and a couple of other bikes, Spectral, OnFly, which looks like the most least looking e-bike I've ever seen. I know we say that a lot about a lot of bikes that are coming out, but that bike looks really sick. And we've got some new, new shoes from uh, Ride Concepts that look pretty cool and a couple of other bits and pieces. But first up, We've been, yeah, out and about traveling, Germany, France. I've just come back from uh, the US of A, so it's been pretty cool to see all this new, there's so much new stuff coming out over the next month. It's, yeah, there's so much new tech coming out. I'm super excited to share it all coming really soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, me too. Yeah. yeah. So first up, we've got Mondraker's new Sly. Now, Mondraker are not hanging around with releasing new bikes. There's been so much stuff that they have released over the past year. And I think they now have all the motor systems in their bikes. No, can't be all of them. I'm not all of them, but but the, oh, the got leading. A good range. Yeah, they've yeah. got they got a really good range. So this this bike has just come out. It's called the Mondraker Sly. Essentially, it's a similar bike to the Mondraker Neat that came out uh, earlier, but it's using the Bosch SX motor and it's an alloy frame. So it is a 160 fork, 150 rear Bosch SX powered lightweight bike, and the value looks pretty good. So it's five thousand. I think 500 pounds well i think it's five six us dollars so five thousand six hundred us dollars for the base spec model which is the r and then you've got the rr <laughs> the pirate edition the RR. <laughs> <laughs> i never thought that was great and that's uh six thousand five hundred ninety nine us dollars great price for an ss bike mm. arguably one of the cheaper if not one of the cheapest i think cube is currently maybe the cube ams hybrid 144 don't go there. Trying to bring it there, just getting the nice bit. But that bike there is is arguably, I think, a little bit cheaper, but minor, minor differences. And especially from a brand like Mondraker, I think that's an incredible price point because they're not notorious for being a cheaper brand. Yeah, I think traditionally the lightweight bikes have been, you kind of get less for more. You get less battery and less power, but you have to pay more money because they're light and they come with the lightest components, which is not unusual to see lightweight bikes hit 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 pounds, which is a colossal amount of money. So to see this bike come out with the kind of geo and the spec, obviously it's not super high spec. It's got RockShox silo forks, but it's got GX axis, which is pretty cool. And not any just normal GX axis, GX axis T-type. I'm like, okay, that's quite an interesting spec choice. But in terms of performance and the e-bike side of things and the, the complete bike, air suspension is good. It's okay, it gets you by, but then all those little bells and whistles seem to be what people want more so nowadays. It's like, do you remember the, there was the classic uh, showroom spec, wasn't it? It was like put a, a higher spec derailleur on it because that's yeah. what people compare. They look for like an XT... Or yeah, a, you could have you could have a Dior shifter or something like that. People are less noticeable. They're like looking at the drive chain going, what's the mech say? Oh, it's an XT <laughs> mech, but it's got Dior cassette, Dior chain, Dior shifter. As long as it has the XT mech, that's exactly. what people want. Exactly. The, no, the bike looks cool. So I'm, I, I, I liked the neat. There was a couple of things that I thought um, could have been done a bit differently, like the seat tube post. I'm really sensitive to seat tube height and because of the shock mount. And I, I suspect this has got a similar design, but that's just my, my personal preference. But it, it can only go so low because it's got a split seat tube. It, it goes around the shock, so it only goes down so far. So there is limits to, to how much seat post you can get in there. And all the images I've seen of it so far, I've got quite a bit of seat post showing. Yeah, look at that. You can see, like, a good, good But then amount. again, it's a shorter seat tube. So... Whereas you might have a longer seat tube that might cover up a bit more of the dropper post, you're essentially getting the same effect of, you know, where's your total height? It just means you can't hide as much. It's a great looking bike. I think yeah. it looks incredible. There's a few, I mean, the spec, yeah, is probably the thing to look at, but it's full 29, which I'm not against by any means, but... Has anybody ridden that silo fork? Have you guys ridden it? I, I've seen one. I think you've got one, haven't you? I've got the Domain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, what damper's in it? Is it mo some motion control or...? Damper's. It doesn't come with a motion control damper, which is mm. a benefit because the motion control was limited, a lot heavier, not quite as refined. And Nasi, yeah, it's a bit more basic, but it actually does it does a pretty good job, to be honest. I mean, for a lower-end fork, you're still getting a decent damper rather than, like, say, 
of RockShox 35, which yeah. will come with a motion control damage. That, that was the worst fork I've ever used. <laughs> it was RC. It was really crap. <laughs> yeah, that genuinely was. I, that, 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 we don't see that price point anymore. though. Again, we've got, and again, you know, I would still rather a uh, RockShox 35 over like a Suntour XCT mm. two springs in a tube. <laughs> Yeah, mm. yeah. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I mean... We're talking on lower end side of things. But yeah, okay, so it's got... That's the R spec, right, that's got the silo. Okay, so that's this one The here. cheapest one. Yeah. yeah, the cheaper one. It's got DB8 brakes on there, which are, they're not bad at all. They're, I really yeah. like those. I think they're a really solid brake. They're, they're like just the most basic. And they're mineral oil, like the Maven, aren't they? Yeah, they so do, they're... yeah. So any of the DB range will come with mineral oil nowadays, which, again, it, they're easy. They're easy brakes. They do the job. They're powerful mm. enough break and for a slightly shorter travel bike 160 150 yeah i think it's a a good setup again in this you know now this lightweight category kind of comes in and is a bit more affordable is this going to be like your teenager kind of <laughs> spec of a, on a, on a i bike, don't think many teenagers e are buying still five and a half grand crazy, bikes. Definitely not, i but, mean but but the price is getting way more attractive like you're still getting a 20 it's 21 kilo it's not like super light it's not under the 20 kilo bracket but for people that want uh, a, a bosch powered bosch the bosch sx motor is really good so i think it's it's an attractive price point it's fairly light and quite often with the lightweight bikes, you have to spend a, a ton of money to actually get the lightweight bike. So it's good to see that it's, it's ticking that kind of that more. It's not it's not cheap, but it's more um, affordable. A bit of the environment to, as well, alloy. Alloy. And it's yeah. got that, what do they call it? Stealth alloy. So it's kind of really smooth welds other than yeah. the one at the bottom by the... By the battery, yeah. uh, by the motor mount. But again, you know, like geo numbers, uh, they're all quite in line. There's nothing nothing crazy, but it's all like really decent numbers. So 64 and a half degree head angle, 77 degree uh, effective seat tube angle. Um, yeah, reach numbers. It goes from 440 on a small all the way up to 520 in 20 mil increments. Yeah, I mean, it's all in keeping. Yeah. Um, it's basically the Neat, isn't it? It's the Mondrake and Neat in alloy with a Bosch SX motor. So it's like a slightly heavier, more powerful Neat. Yeah. With a, a bit of, better, I say better price point, a different price point. It's definitely the oh, Neat. Like, that. That's a cool animation, that's isn't it? I like really that. Cool graphic. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good. Nicely and done. It, it looks it looks very similar to the Neat. It, I don't even think that the profile of it is particularly different because on the neat if you see it it's got quite a built up bottom bracket area in front of the the tq motor where mm -hmm. on this sly the shape of that bosch where it's got a bit more of a bulbous front rather than a being a cylindrical tq motor yeah looks a very similar shape to the frame where the blue is on that neat so. well you are resident expert on bike aesthetics mm. oh, what, yeah you what, are. what do you think i like it i really like it but then I think Mondrake are always good at that, aren't they? They always they got the lines in the right places of of their bikes, mm. and the colorways are quite nice. Not my favourite Mondrake colorways, I got to say, they're quite plain, aren't they? But I think that suits the sort of fits the vibe of the bike a bit as well. It's a bit more understated, yeah. isn't it? Talking of nice looking bikes, let's take a look at this Canyon because this came out a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and. I mean... Is that the right one? That, that looks, isn't that the normal one? No, no, no that's, that's the, right the spec. One. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's a good great. Point, yeah. That is the spectral on-fly. Can't you tell by the, oh, the dragonfly dragon thing on, <laughs> on the back, on their website? Uh, but that, I mean, the that looks sick, doesn't it? doesn't it? even that look like it's got a battery in it. It doesn't, does so it? When you, you um, nothing on either brand, but when you look at the Mondrake and Neat with the TQ motor, mm -hmm. it looks... It's not much more obvious, but when you've got something like that Canyon Spectral on fly, it kind of proves the extent of how small the TQ system can be. Yeah. And the Neat looks more bulky than that, even though it's not much. You know, when the Neat first came out, I was like, holy moly, look at that. You wouldn't even be able to tell that's an e-bike. Maybe Mondrake it down to a bit chunky, but that, where is the battery? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, the ang maybe the, ang the angle just does it favours looking at the silhouette, but it's a very, very attractive and handsome looking bike that I, I really like that. I mean, yes, the, the TQ is so small and the integration of it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, seat tube insertion. It looks like here, it's fairly kinks. kinks there. I don't know if you'll be able to fit a massive 
dropper. Is it running the? Yeah, it's running the Canyon dropper though. You can adjust. It's an adjustable dropper, so I assume it comes slammed with a two hundred mil, and then you can adjust it. Maybe. Maybe. If, I think it said it mentioned it on the website just a minute ago. I think it said oh, something it's about two hundred mil dropper max dropper. Oh, mm. it's got the KIS. It's got KISS, yeah. yeah, it's got the Kiss system. Interesting. Is that they all spec with that, or is it? I the think they. Is it just the top spec one? Look at how is this an e-bike? Look at it. I know the top tube seems to be thinner than any other Spectral I've ever seen before. Like that's that profile of that top tube is narrow. It yeah. looks like they've all got KIS and Kiss, whatever it's called. Yeah, a little Kiss there. <laughs> I like it's the nice. color. It's called barely olive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. I like the, the orange though. I really like the. the I'm going to guess it's called burnt orange or something like that. Burnt orange. We'll, we'll take a look at that. But this is uh, essentially what is it? One sixty, one fifty. Yeah. With TQ's HPR fifty motor, fifty newton meters of torque, uh, three hundred watts of peak power. F what's the battery? Three hundred and sixty watt hour battery. Yeah, three hundred and sixty yeah. watt hour battery. And I, I, I mean, we said it before, but other than the cost, which is a massive factor, why would you not buy something like this over a regular pedal bike? what is their reason to not if if they if it was the same price as the canyon spectral versus the spectral on fly will <laughs> yeah i'm not what would you take this. That, uh well how do i take the on fly if it was the same price but would um, you is there not like a negative thing to oh, having to charge up your bike no, or having no. it having to come with chaos because again we're talking about the oh. bike not just ha just having a motor the configuration of the bike in its entirety between the spectral and the spectral on fly can you turn the kis off i can't remember if you if you can disable it or you can put it to the lowest setting which is basically off yeah i think you can put it super super slightly mm. you'd have to have your handlebars at like completely 90 degrees for it to feel like it's got any tug i think i think we mentioned this in the <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh, a little bit of tug. Don't want to feel stay, any tug. Hey, stay professional. <laughs> well, I think we met, we mentioned this in the in the when we had Doddy on the podcast is that we were saying there's always going to be those type of people that are only interested in going out and doing the exercise on their own, like yeah. through their own power. And I think those are the people that are still going to be there to buy the yeah. That if, was a good even point. if they were the same price, there's still going to be people that want that. Yeah, Doddy actually said that feel didn't he, he said bike mm. feel How, there's nothing like even though they're natural feeling there's nothing like being under your own pedal power and having a, a non-motorized bike and so. that sense of achievement of getting to the top of like a really hard climb that you've got to yourself not this not, almost finds feels like a cheap bike it feels like people would look at you and go oh, he's not riding an e-bike and then you've just got that little like you check your motor on but mm. I, I i'd argue to say and just maybe i'm just giving a difference of opinion here is that i probably like for the little power you get with the tq motor and the battery uh sometimes i felt a bit frustrated thinking i've got an e-bike oh i should be able to do more and it's not quite enough and it has a very good ride feel but you still got a motor on there and the ride feel is always ultimately going to be less interrupted with no motor yeah for sure and you don't have to worry about batteries or charging or range or any of that you can just ride yeah. for for days and and all of that stuff because even with these lightweight bikes the range on them with the 360 watt hour battery is not not massive. No. So you can't you can't go out on a I personally couldn't go out and have an all day ride unless I dialed the assistance down to a fly. A fly a flies <laughs> flies worth of assistance. You got a range a dragon extender fly. Yeah. Range extender as well. Yeah. 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 You range. could do a whole day with that range extender as well, couldn't you? Maybe. Can it definitely take the range yeah, extender? Yeah, it's it's got it is. They've got that oh, lower yeah. down tube and it, it fits in really nicely. It comes, Just in here, right? Yeah. Exactly. Boost your range by 44%, apparently. Nice. Yeah, and and someone made the point the other day with these lightweights is, I mean, for example, if you're at a bike park or somewhere like that and you've got a point to charge it, they don't take nearly as long to charge up because mm. it's a smaller battery. So, yeah, yeah, it depends on how you structure your day. I'm still on the fence with the lightweight bikes. Mm. Now, the that's going to be light, but the... The heavier bikes, the, the delta is decreasing. Mm. So it used to be a lightweight would be like 18 kilos and a full power is 24, but certainly stuff's coming. But it's, it's shrinking, man. The DJI. It's <laughs> yeah, the DJI. 
And it's like this this Spectral on Fly, the CF Collective Edition, is 19.5 kilos. And the lower spec one's lighter. It's 18 point something. 18.9. Okay, but if you look at the spec and we use, it seems like, you know, the polarizing view now that the DJI has created and we use that as a base, like a, a leaning point. What's so different on the spec from this to that DJI bike? Uh, well, this comes with... It comes with a TQ motor. TQ motor comes with a smaller battery. Most of them come with a 36, apart from the collective edition. Okay. So the collective edition comes with a 38, but let's just say for the example of the 30, most of them come with a 36. So the spec look at this one here. doesn't differ really that much between the two bikes and the weight difference isn't that much. So the big differences are it's got more than double the battery capacity on the Amflow and a more powerful motor for arguably less than a kilo's extra weight. Mm. And the the cheaper Amflow is very similar to that in price, isn't it? The silver Amflow. Yeah. Mm. I, this looks it really looks nice. Like, no, it looks really good, yeah. And this is, this is nothing, you know, I'm not going to just completely say Amflow is better than everything else, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's been a big disruptor, but that Canyon looks a lot better than the outflow. Yeah. The outflow th- doesn't look incredibly bad by any means, but that is a really, really amazing aesthetically looking bike. The the bar has been set with the Amflow having a sub 20 kilo weight with a 600 watt hour battery and 120 newton meter motor. That that's the that shows people what is capable and what is out there. So anything that doesn't get kind of close to that in one way or another is always going to have that kind of question mark as to what's the point in this that's much less power and much less battery than the Amflow. So I don't know. We With the Amflow, we are going to do a video testing that versus it's going to be a group motor test and a group bike test because the Amflow is a motor system, but it doesn't mean that that Amflow bike is amazing. No, no, no. Because there's two different things to me. There's like the DJI system itself, which is awesome and a great feat of engineering. And then there's the Amflow bike itself, which is it's just, it's almost like a separate product in itself, isn't yeah, it? So, I, I think that's the case. And I, the bike itself, is is there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't excite me as much. It's the motor system that excites me, I think, mm. the most on that bike be interested to see if it comes on other things but again this spectral on fly i think is for a different market yeah i think totally. it's like as much i'm just doing comparisons but the problem is that amflow just kind of blows everything else with <laughs> water in a weird way you know it's mm. much lighter but it's more powerful and so it's kind of an anomaly in in the scale of things yeah and i don't think there's any of the other tq model bikes on the market at the moment that look nearly as good as that canyon can we say It'd be quite interesting to see a ZF motor in there because the ZF motor must be very similar size to the TQ motor. It's a little bit bigger, but not not a huge amount. Mm. It's, it's kind of wider, but it's got that same kind of profile, that cylindrical can of Coke type profile. So it will be slightly bigger, but I think they'll be able to create this kind of aesthetic. But that was really powerful. I think yeah. that ZF motor would be really exciting in this, but again, it kind of throws that bike out what it would be. And the problem with the ZF system is the battery would be huge compared to the tq motor yeah so maybe because you know we see a lot of brands yt is a good example of this but there's lots of or bay is another good example of this where they use their own their own battery system yeah which is approved by shimano tq whoever it might be to work with their system but it's not their it's not their battery so maybe we'd see a zf system with their own battery that's a higher cell density and that could be really cool yeah I don't like this, this massive long cable. In fact, on all range extenders that are coming out at the moment, they all place the charging port in a different place. So when you buy a range extender, like the new Bosch range extender, depending on where your power port is on the bike, you have to. they do different lengths of connector <laughs> cables. Look at that. That's but really buy, ruined. It, it, can you just buy the cable or do you have to buy an extend, so, extender so, with the right length cable? No. So you buy the extend. So I don't know about this. It's probably the same. But for Bosch, you have to buy the extender, then the cable. So you have to get a tape measure out or contact them. Mm. This is, we need, I think this is going to be something over the next few years that it'd be much better if it's, it's, I don't know, the range extender just plugs in and it's, it's like a, It's got to be like a magnetic, like, yeah. a, like a MagSafe system yeah. when you have in your iPhone or whatever. It that, just magnetizes on there, clips on and it just charges through. That's how, that's how it gives the power to the bike. Cause that looks rubbish. Let's be honest. It's a lovely looking bike. 
and then you've got that long dangly cable that's going to be flapping around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not ruined it, but just just looks for the aesthetics pants. of such a for the bike that had such strong aesthetics to have that cable. It just looks a bit like an afterthought, and it's not just this canyon. It's lots of bikes, like my Crestline, the range extenders down low, and you have to get a cable, and it kind of it just doesn't look right. It looks kind of bolted on. I'd argue to say that there's limitations to what a company can do with a range extender because of the companies that supply the motors, whatever. But Crestline, Nikolai, there's a few brands that have got a really good method of clipping that cable in or having that cable tucked or somewhere so it's not going to rattle. I yeah. feel like with this canyon, they could have put like some sort of clip system on the side. It looks like there's nothing on that. I yeah. couldn't say for certain because I haven't seen the bike in reality and held it, but kind of looks like there's not a method to do it. That's what zip ties are for, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you cut them right. <laughs> I'll just put on my seven grand bike, I'll just put some zip ties on there, just some straps. Yeah. Do you know what I did? I got so destroyed in the comments about the way I cut the zip tie on the Dream Build <laughs> that I actually bought a specific tie, uh, zip tie cutter. Flush, from the, from the best tool yeah. company in the world. I was, I was like so proud that we made a really nice looking dream build and the number one comment that people left was, you cannot leave the zip tie like that. I left it. I didn't cut it flush. It did look rubbish and I should have done it yeah. correctly, but it's funny what people noticed. The Recharge podcast is sponsored by The Electric Bike Shop, the e-bike specialists. And they've been selling e-bikes since 2017 from their first store in Bristol. And since then, they've rapidly grown from that single shop to now 10 stores across the UK with more planned for 2024. The electric bike shops supply a host of major e-bike brands, plus a ton of parts and accessories in stock. The electric bike shop are highly reviewed by real customers, and they've achieved an excellent status on Trustpilot.com with hundreds of reviews. They offer free UK delivery, highly competitive pricing with price matching, they take part in the cycle to work scheme, and they carry literally thousands of e-bikes in stock for quick delivery. They also offer test rides where you can get hands-on with the bikes, so you can try different sizes. There's really nothing like getting on a bike and trying out the size for real to make sure you get the right bike size for you. So check them out at theelectricbikeshop.co.uk where you can see the range, or you can even book a test ride direct from their website at one of their 10 nationwide stores. Thanks again to The Electric Bike Shop for sponsoring the Recharged podcast. So question for you, this bike here, who is going to buy this bike? Who's it for? Well... No, not me. No, not you. Yeah. I'm going to ask um, you. I don't because uh, my, my I, I don't feel confident in my answer. And and you said not me, but why why not? Why is this bike not for you? Uh, I I think the battery is too small. Okay. I think if if I'm going to ride a bike that light with that amount of battery, if I'm going to do a whole day, I probably like you said have it in eco or whatever the lowest mode is on Canyon. I may as well just ride my normal bike and save the money of... I'm not going to go out and buy one of those if I have a normal bike already, an acoustic yeah. bike, sorry. But if I want to actually do a full day of e-biking like in Wales or somewhere with a lot of elevation, I wouldn't want to take that because I've used lightweight e-bikes with small batteries at places like that and it wasn't... It was okay, but it wasn't like... I'd rather spend my money on a full power e-bike. Mm. Do you feel like it's a bit of a tease? And it's like, oh, I've got power, but only to a point. I've got, oh, I've got battery life, but it might not last me the whole day. I think f to answer who it's for, I think if you have people that have been riding the Spectral and are very comfortable on the Spectral for the past few years, because it hasn't changed that much, the Spectral in general, I don't mm -hmm. think they changed the travel a few times on different models. Yeah. But there'll be people that love that bike and yeah. love like the value of that bike. And for an extra like couple grand that they save up, they can get an electrified version mm. which they can do more miles on they can get more laps in yeah, yeah. that's a good I, I i see this as more like your spectral 125 customers who okay. want a bit more like local laps like maybe it's a working dad who's only got an hour to ride after work so you, you're doing local laps, mum. but yeah or mum sorry yeah, yeah good point and you just want to smash out local laps and just get them in. The reason I say dad is because of my experience is like sometimes you only have an hour after having a newborn. I I, th I was speaking to um, Scrooge. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a while ago. <laughs> Almost four years ago. <laughs> uh, I was speaking to Strew from PT's and yep. he's got the Mondrake and Neat 
and he loves it because he likes to feel like he's actually working on a bike ride. Like, you know, we touched on it earlier about that feeling like you're actually pedaling and feeling like that sense of achievement. And he loves going out for long rides on that. Um, so, just, uh, go on. Why not just get a normal bike? He's got a normal bike. So what's the argument? Where, like, Because to just, me, they sit so so close. Can, can, do, can go further on it. Yeah. And it takes the sting out of the climbs. So I rode the TQ neat uh, and and did a video in the Quantox. And it's steep, man. It's really steep there. And it t- you still feel like you're putting in a ton of effort. It's hard work, but I could not do some of those climbs without well, motor. That's the, that's the yeah. defining point. Is it like it, it will take you beyond your current capabilities just that little bit more. Yeah. So it's almost like a training tool where you can push yourself that little bit more and you can get your fitness up it actually is something that sounds again i'm i'm not talking from experience here yeah no. <laughs> but it sounds like it's something that's going to drum in and it's just going to get it's like i'm going to use my gym example like if you're using a theraband to do pull-ups you strap a band over the strap and you put it on your foot and it reduces your weight ever so slightly so you're still getting a workout yeah. but it means that you can do five press ups pull-ups instead of just doing one and it gives you that ability and then you build up your strength and it kind of it's a it's a safety net when you need it but essentially you're riding a normal bike with like just yeah. a little, little yeah, push yeah. now and again that's an excellent example by the way i like that it's really good thank you yeah very yeah. professional you should Can we get a yay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not if you ask for it. Oh, sorry, yeah. If you ask, it doesn't happen. Uh, but no, they they did a... It's a sick looking bike, isn't it? Canyon do make some nice looking bikes. So that's, yeah. that's really good. All right, moving on. Next up, oh, more more electronic technology. So <laughs> well, we are, We're on an e-bike podcast. I we're on an e-bike hope. podcast and I'm all for it. Like I love all the new technology. I like all the electronics. I've... I've yeah, we've got transmission droppers with electronics fox just bought out a neo dropper which is an electronic dropper and now they have electronic suspension live valve they had before which is kind of like wired yeah electronic suspension but this is wireless electronic suspension so adam you've we've all been looking at it but give us a, a, an overview of kind of what it is and what it does so yeah it's a, it's it's like a wireless suspension system now, um, very similar in some respects to the flight attendant system, but works in a different way. So RockShox flight attendant, but essentially you're getting a, a just a rear shock that is able to change from open to closed, depending on the terrain. You have a sensor on your front brake, your rear brake, your fork, and your shock to be able to detect those. So it's much easier to fit aftermarket. It's all able to be put on rather than, say, a flight attendant system where you've got to buy fork, shock, everything. It allows to, it, you know, it, it reacts to the train. So the it's the speed in which it can react. I think it it can react in... It did 400 times per second. So it's is, analysing the is, terrain. Yeah, analysing and then it... Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, and then it reacts. It's able to react to that in one seventieth of a second, I think, is the numbers they put on it. Yeah, so what they're suggesting is it's it's essentially on the shock. It's not on the fork. So yeah. so as opposed to RockShock's flight attendant, that's on both. So this is just on the shock. And Rock Shock, uh, Fox say that actually that, that gives quite a change to the ride experience. The shock is uh, able to affect change on the trail quite a lot. For example, firming up when you're climbing, yeah. firming up when you're on uh, flat sections and uh, kind of more high speed stuff and open up over chunder and all that stuff. So what it's doing is it's analysing the sensor that's on the front brake um, mount and the rear. So they suggest that what happens is if you go over a bump before it goes to the rear wheel, it can adjust that shock based on the bump from the front wheel, which is pretty cool. That that's all within their time frames, but if you're super fast, oh, you, you got to be like <laughs> if you're super fast. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not. <laughs> but one seventieth of a second, you got to yeah. be hitting stuff really quick. So so again, like, who's this for? What's the point in it? What's it gonna do? Good question. Good question. So they I say it's gonna make you faster. Yeah, essentially, it, it, this it's it's. I I work quite closely with flight attendant, and it's kind of like it will benefit everyone. But it's not necessary for everyone, I think, is the case. Yeah. Like, you can ride without and, and um, you can ride without it, but it will benefit all your riding. It will make it more efficient and more faster. It will. It's, it's kind of leaning towards comfort. But essentially, 
it does it all so quickly and it uses a, a magnetic solenoid. So it uses a magnetic kind of switch essentially that opens and closes and changes the, the compression circuit that it's on to be able to change it. So it's virtually silent. You don't hear it. Flight attendant's got an actuator motor that goes, <laughs> which mm. some people like, like an axis kind of chirp. Yeah, it's very, very similar, yeah. the same sort of thing. And you've got controls, but this, this one does it silently. Um, the main difference, and I use flight attendant as the example because I've had a lot of time hands on that. The default to site flight attendant is it tends to be default to open and then it will firm up in the circumstances. So it uses sensors in the cranks and the motors and it detects your angle and various other things with flight attendant whilst the Fox stuff I think is the opposite where it stays more firm and opens up to depending on the terrain. What if the battery runs out? So, because it's magnetic, when it doesn't have charge, that solenoid just oh. just stays open. Smart, uh, yeah. Smart. It's a clever, it's a really really clever system, I think, in how it works. Do we want more batteries and more stuff to charge and more stuff to think about? It's. Did I ever tell you the example of my house when I worked at Apple? I went, I, I got all this text, I got a discount on all these little bits and pieces, all these gadgets, and it was super cool. And uh, I got this wireless light kit for my entire house, right? So I made my house wireless with lights. <laughs> And I did like the uh, the thermostat. That was all it's wireless. Like, like two thousand and one so, a space. So I, so I made everything wireless, lights. and it got to the point where like the the things kept running out of battery. So the radiator valves run out of battery, and I'd get alerts on my phone, and to the point where I had no heating because like, <laughs> and and I couldn't I couldn't turn off the lights, and they would turn on and off automatically because the set timers. <laughs> and in the end, I was like. There's nothing more simple than a switch and just going mm. over to the light switch and turning it on and off. And sometimes all this extra stuff, despite some claimed advantages, we've not tested it, and I'm sure there are some really good advantages. Is it worth the hassle? Is the lemon worth the squeeze to get a little bit of performance advantage from? Depends on your situation, doesn't it? And what, what type of riding you're doing. Maybe if, if you're a racer and you're trying to... Oh, defi I definitely think if you're a racer, that would be a no-brainer. Mm. If, well obviously without testing it yeah I th but being able to for it to automatically firm up on climbs you don't have to use any brain power or all right here's, here's a good question for both of you how often do you use a climb switch never i used to try and use it loads because it makes a big difference but i would always forget to so then so i'd be the perfect, the perfect person customer. for this yeah. but i would not spend the money that it, they're yeah. asking for it. yeah exactly and it's like you would it's, it's to some degree the the, I think the conundrum I have this and say flight attendant as wireless suspension system. It's incredible technology and it does work really well. Mm. This arguably works faster than flight attendant. There it does. It's it's Fox says it's up to twenty <laughs> times faster than their closest competitor, competitor which is <laughs> how, how many other wireless <laughs> like, rubbish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there's got to be some obscure brand in somewhere nah, that's done it no with one. some there's great no big else. whopping thing. But but so yeah, it's an interesting point to that. But it, it's that thing of the whole way the conundrum I have is the way that you need to treat it is by stop thinking about it. So you set and forget. The thing that I had with flight attendant, it's always reactive, so it can't think about what you're doing. If you're going to pop off a curb, it's firm because you're on the flats, and then it pops off, and it oh, it kind of weird that you pop off and it's firm, and then it kind of frees up in time. That's using flight attendant as the example. This is meant to be quieter, faster, and less noticeable. But I'm in the mind of I'm spending a lot of money to not think about it, to then kind of get to the end of my ride and be like, you know what? I felt like I was a little bit faster. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money and a lot of not doing stuff to try and notice there's some difference. Yeah, that's that's it. It's how much is it? It well, it was. <laughs> I think the coil is nine hundred and what was no the air is nine 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 dollars. Yep. So that's for a float X. But then you need the Neo. kit. Then you need to buy the that's kit. That's yeah. yeah. the GH, The GHX is arguably cheaper. It's nine four nine US dollars, but that's without a coil. So ultimately, with the coil, with the actual spring, it comes on more expensive. But then it's three nine nine. US dollars? I don't understand this. So, so, so hold on. So you have to buy the shock. You can't put it on any shock. You have to buy the shock and then the kit. Why, why is it not just sold as one product? Arguably, and this is their argument, it's cheaper than flight attendant. Because in order to have yeah, flight attendant, you have to have a fork, a shock <laughs> and and uh, a crank sensor. And essentially it has to, it's almost has to be OEM spec. You can't buy it aftermarket. So their point is that you can pay for it. You can yeah, add it to anything. It's confusing. Like oh, why massively. is it? Why can't you? Why do you have to buy two different? 
things? Is, Why is it not just is you, there, you get it and you buy it? It's one price. Is their aim that they're going to replace the OEM Float X shocks? And they're saying they're they're thinking this because he said in the video, Geordie Court said then that it's even without all the technology, it's still a great shock. Okay, so even if you just turn it off, so like if the you don't, off. if you don't buy that extra kit, you can still run that shock and it'd be a great ah, shock. So maybe they're thinking, oh, for people that are going to buy a replacement shock, they can buy this shot. I can't remember the exact RRP of a normal Flow X, a factory Flow X at the moment, but it's They're a lot quite of money still. Aren't mm. they? So you can spend a couple extra hundred and in the future, if you wanted to, you could potentially upgrade. That's with the a kit. really good point. And maybe you meant, you mentioned OEM, maybe OEMs will supply them and then <laughs> the end customer can choose to buy the upgrade kit three nine nine dollars It is. And then you've got, that's a really good point. I didn't think of it like that. So yeah. Cool. It's, yeah, and they've so they've got uh, they've got an app as well, and it's the whole thing is you can adjust the your tune, and not to say the tune that you'd get on your shim stacks, you just adjust your compression, and you can choose at what point it reacts, how big a bump you can have it to be more closed than more open, and vice versa. And uh, the app looks really really well thought out. Um, it looks slightly more in depth than say like the flight attendant rock shocks app. Hmm. Um, they, you can tune it to the terrain that you're going into. And now there was kind of a red flag when I heard that, which was like, does that mean I need to set up my tune to every different place mm, I ride? Yeah. You're going to Swinley Forest. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to get the Swinley tune. Now you're going Locked to Surrey out. Hills. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you've got, you know, like does it kind of like you you it feels like a bit of a juxtaposition where it's like oh okay you, you 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 it's a system where you set and forget and it does everything for you and you'll be better off riding with it it's quite it, sorry to interrupt i'm just it's it's quite bulky isn't it it's quite like there's a lot of that stuff going on or is it just the angle no, of that it is it is it's not a small bit it's just it's like a big bulk box that sits where and on and where the piggyback part yeah. of the shock is i'd really like to try it and i'm sure after trying it there will be some benefits but part part of <laughs> some benefits part, feels like. part of riding a bike and setting it up is it's consistent like mm. you know when you've got your suspension set up you know how it's going to perform all of the time and and i think the worry of this is what if it's changing stuff like if you're coming over a chunky section and then you're hitting a flat section i know how my bike's going to feel this is going to be a little bit more unpredictable because it's going to be changing stuff. Maybe it's for the better. I don't know. It's, it's the confidence. It's like a system that no one's ever asked for, but it will benefit you. So, no, Well, racers say, might have asked for it. Yeah, maybe he's not saying that's kind of the wrong the wrong wording, but it's it's a system that's so foreign to people that they don't know what it's about. And this was kind of flight attendant. So I think it's a better move strategically when they've launched it because people have a bit more of an understanding of wireless suspension systems and what it actually does. But I do still feel like... The land of the unknown. I've just thought of something. Loic Bruni's been running electronic Olin suspension, right? He's got those buttons on his yeah, thing. So the three buttons, the so red, it, green, and... Uh, no, it's blue, red, and yellow. Maybe. I think they are. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. But maybe that is worth it for that type of application when it literally Definitely. could be the difference between first and second, like winning and not winning. So I don't know, it's cool, man. But how much of this stuff do we want on e-bikes? So we've got ABS batteries in uh valves on the on the tires uh with like airways and shock wheels yeah. batteries in wireless droppers batteries in a shock batteries in a fork coin operated batteries in in the things batteries in the down tube like i had a bike once and it had i think it was like 11 batteries in it once you'd counted the <laughs> no. honestly because it, it was a trek rail with airways and shock, shock full whiz, axis airways, sh sh shock honestly whiz. shock wheels airways so if you count the amount of batteries on it, it was, honestly, it was 11 batteries. Front wheel, rear wheel, rear shock, fork. Yeah. Main down tube battery. Yeah. Axis battery. Yeah. Axis dropper battery. And then the controllers. And then controller. On both sides. Yeah. Both the axis. That's nine. And then technically <laughs> a coin battery and the display. <laughs> There you go. That's ten. That's we'll go 10. with that because there is a coin battery in the display. So there's ten Jeez. batteries on an e-bike. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. There's it would be cool to try it. Do we need it? Probably not. Is it going to be better? Possibly. Who knows? I mm, I see this as less e-bike tech. 
Okay. Personally, because it makes an analog bike more efficient. It makes a regular pedal bike more efficient mm. and it makes it better. But on an e-bike, it's like... What about climbing with an e-bike though? Do you think it might help? Because actually sometimes when I'm climbing on an e-bike, it does it, it does bounce around a little bit. So you're hitting stuff. Perspective. Yeah, you're hitting stuff quite quick climbing. And I do find it kind of compressing. And because you're hitting it fast because you're climbing at quite a pace, it can kind of bob through the suspension. Wallowy. Yeah, wallowy. That's a good phrase. Good word. Because I think <laughs> I think that might firm it up a little bit. Maybe it's quite a niche show, isn't it? It's so niche. Yeah, but yeah. you could also just flick the switch on your current shock and save yourself. Like well, it's dangerous $500. when you're riding, though. Yeah, but on f- the f- you're talking about on get remote. But I, I get wired remote. Why not? Oh, I'm like it's... I don't ever stop and think oh, I'm gonna lock the shot. I just ride, and if a if a hill climb if a hill is there, I just climb up it. Do we? I think don't. That that's it's... beautiful, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're one of the the purists. Yeah, I love to see it. Yeah. I, I want to be like Rob when I grow up. He's just a rider. Do I can't think, be asked we... like thinking about flicking switches to climb and all that stuff. Maybe that's the product for me. Maybe. Simplicity. Do we think that having just a wireless lockout or firm switch would be as useful on an e-bike or on a bike than it would having it doing it all for you? Probably. Probably. <laughs> you I can know, do that like flight a, it's basically what... I'm not going to spend as much as it would cost to have a flight attendant. I could just, you know, you get those little like home devices, which is like it's got a little robot arm that pushes the switch on and off, so you can. He knows his... all of them. Yeah, he has just talked about it. Oh, yeah. So you get those little tiny things you can clip on anything that has a switch and go, "Hey Siri, turn on my kettle." Well, and it's it, like and a it, finger. And I've not seen those like ones. A little robotic little no, button pusher. Had some you tap on Siri in the <laughs> oh in I the did studio. yeah so it just pushes the little button surely I could just have that stuck <laughs> into my shock thing. and it just pushes the compression button I think you should make your own live valve an Adam valve <laughs> <laughs> don't call it an Adam valve it'll go wrong <laughs> we could call it oh brilliant brilliant no I mean it's cool there's there's lots of innovation I think it's cool tech it it all of this tech makes biking better in some way or another so maybe it'll catch on maybe it won't but fair play they're giving it a go they have to have something that competes with rock shocks and flight attendant and clearly it's working for racing because loic bruni is pressing it he's doing it. maybe he's got one of those finger <laughs> things now. maybe that's what they're hiding they've just got one of those things from amazon screw not all these firmwares we just need to be like hey siri turn on my shock I'm so sorry sorry <laughs> stop talking to siri bro <laughs> um, let, but mechanics, mechanical stuff, you know, mm. let's go back to basics and, you know, we can talk about there's other, you know, you've got inertia valves, that kind of thing, but genie shocks with... Hold on. Siri, shut up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like you've got like, you know, like brain shocks and things like that with Specialized where it's inertia and a valve and it's mechanical and that was really revolutionary. <laughs> and now we have something else mechanical... You know, they're not mechanical, but there's, it's it's a physical thing that doesn't have electronics, which I think is a really cool product that mm. can actually make a difference. So these are the, looking at the... Moon boots. Yeah, the Ride Concept Talic shoes. These are really nice. I mean... These look really cool. There's loads of cool tech in those that doesn't require a battery. So it's got D3O and different compounds and things like that. There's actually a little... <laughs> the way that we came... The way we... That was not a that. smooth transition. I know you were trying it. to make it smooth, yeah. but let's go with it. It's crazy. Let's go with it. So what are these? So they're the Ride Concept Talic shoes. Uh, they're not necessarily a winter shoe, but they're a bit more of a rugged, off-road, kind of all-round use shoe. They've got different compounds in the in the toe area and the heel area. On, so it's got D3O sole. in the sole, right? Yeah, so in the actual sole itself, but the the compounds on the toe and the heel are a bit more flexy, so got you can manoeuvre those and you can actually walk and... Bigger lugs on the front, on the toe and the heel yeah. as well, right? For yeah, when it. you're hiking, you're pushing up the trail. Also, are we going to say this isn't some sort of paid advertisement? No, this is not This is not a sponsored advert. These no, are just no, no, shoes just that cool Ride Concept shoes. sent in and we thought they were pretty cool. Yeah. So that... Yeah. So uh, as far as I'm aware, so they, they've just been brought into the UK because they were US only. So we're starting to see more of those in the UK now. Mm. But they've they've got a BOA system on them. Really, really cool looking shoes. They are... A, oh. BOA is the best thing for shoes, yeah. I, yeah. in my opinion. It is so good. It's so quick. You know, you're not getting laces coming undone and tying up in your pedals and stuff. For sure. BOA is great. Are these waterproof? No, they aren't waterproof. I they, don't think they they're water like, resistant. What's cord, Cordura? I think they're like a military. Mili- they think they started off a military application. Did they? Um, Are these yours? They're mine. <laughs> you haven't worn them yet, though, have you? No. They, no, smell, no. they smell new. Do you remember when you got new shoes for school and they smelled mm-hmm. really nice? They're 
Um, I really like how much protection those shoes have. They've they're because they're a mid. They they have a lot of ankle support. They have a really solid toe box. So if you're kicking a rock or something, um, your toes are going to be protected. That is like a feels like a steel. Toe it's cap solid, isn't it? Yeah, mm. really solid. Um, and the D three O. Have we got that little D three O thing? Yeah, the, where the, is it? It's right so here. it like firms up, doesn't it? So it's a little tube with an EVA kind of like foam, standard foam. And then the on the top is the D3O on one end. And if you turn it to the D3O side, it's damping. So it doesn't bounce about, which is super cool. And then the EVA foam side, it has a good little bounce there. Mm. Do it on, do it Interesting. Mic. That's just stationary. Yeah, the double bounce there. Wow. It cushions, it cushions it cushions the it. impacts, doesn't it? So yeah. they're saying that it, you should have less reverberation through your feet. Nice. This is not a sponsored ad like it's Will not. said. No. Um, Ride Concepts just uh, sent us a shoe and we thought it was quite cool. Nice. Yeah, they look they look really great. And I think like, I know I was saying about mechanical sort of damping and things like that. It, I like it when you don't have to have electronics to do something when it's just <laughs> clever engineering. Hey, don't give them ideas. No, they'll, no, be, they'll, be, they'll be electronic, they'll be like damping attendant for your shoes. I've been saying, have you seen those shoes that make you walk faster? No, shut they got, up. They got, they no, 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 they've got little wheels on them. When you start no. walking, it like doubles your step distance. <laughs> Hilarious. Brilliant. But yeah, Brilliant. no, there is a shoe that makes you walk faster and yeah, just not great. Aren't some shoes, running shoes, banned now because they make you run faster? Didn't um, Nike do some? There's, well, actually, there's already a law for running shoes where you can't have a stack height of, I think it's over 40 mil or it's 40 stack something height. mil. They're actually measuring <laughs> shoes. So, stack height. Is that a thing? So shoes? the mid hole, the midsole height. Um, cannot be higher than this amount because it gives an unfair advantage, basically. Um, and those shoes actually have a really, a really tall midsole. Let's so see if these would be uh, class. No, th this stack height on this is fifty centimeters, fifty five, fifty millimeters. I'd be sorry. interested to 50, see how different yeah. they are to the old like five ten impacts, because the five ten impacts are a thick sole. Yeah, they, they, yeah. I mean, I, I have to say, I put my hands up. I haven't tried these properly yet, so I'm excited to try them. Why not? Because I haven't been out of a ride yet. It's been raining pretty much, hasn't it? It's been it? pretty, like pretty, pretty horrendous. Yeah. Um, but I'm really excited to try them. And I think that I, I've had a pair of um, Ride Concept Hellcats before, like a mid-high mid, uh, mid -high kind of riding shoe. Really comfy, almost as grippy as 510, but that was probably about four or five years ago. So I suspect things have changed since mm. then. And it seems like they've... I think they were bought out by Fox, so now that they're doing a yeah, lot of development. Yeah, so these, these are... Yeah, it's part of... Part of Fox, isn't it? Yeah, Fox. Yeah, Fox Factory, Fox. not Fox Head. So, so it's so it's yes, yeah, Fox Factory. Fox Factory, I, I not Fox Head. Just forgot about that. And we've been talking about Fox's suspension. So it's like that's yeah, the, the route company. we should have taken that's from the link. The, that's the link, not me going okay. on this clutch and straws <laughs> mechanical. I don't like electro. No. All right. Well, thanks for coming in and chatting bikes again. Uh, over the next month, there is some incredible stuff coming out loads of new bikes done some cool visits to uh, lots of different places so can't wait for all that to come out and subscribe for more e-bike content we'll catch you soon see ya see, see ya, ya.